and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to attempt to turn a pin blank sent to me all the way from Germany by Andy Haas. Now Andy is the pin blank manufacturer over on Instagram and that's where I first met him. And he was he, he's always putting out uh, photos of these incredible blanks that he's making. And he made this blank called a cracked wood blank where he took a piece of wood and I'm not sure what the process is but he crushes the wood and it forms all these these uh, fissures in the wood and then he fills them with resin and it, it produces these incredible looking blanks and I sent him a very nice note saying man that is that blank is just incredible and he's like well let me send you one so I'm I'm not one to say no I'm very happy to uh, to turn a blank that someone manufactures I, I love it that's one of the things I love about about uh, turning and he sent me the blank and I set on it for a number of months I have a love-hate relationship with ingrain and a cracked blank is a ingrain blank and I would pull it out and I think I'm gonna turn this today and I would talk myself out of it and, and that happened several times finally today I said get off your butt Bob and turn this blank it's too gorgeous you've waited too long this gentleman sent it to you you owe it to him to turn this this gorgeous blank and that is what I'm gonna do today is I'm not going to talk myself out of it. We're going to head over to the lathe and I'm going to turn this blank and we're going to see what kind of pin we can make out of it. I hope you enjoy. I brought the cracked wood blank over to the lathe and I did take the corners off to hopefully ease the turning because uh, you can see I'm turning ingrained and then of course that ingrain, this piece of wood has been crushed and then it's been filled. The cracks have been filled with resin. So I'm very, very nervous about turning this one so I'm trying to give myself every opportunity to succeed I have a love-hate relationship with ingrain turning. <laughs> uh, it's always been uh, one of my nemesis. Um, I got lucky in that the piece came off in one chunk and I have it all. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna get this uh, dust collector out of the way. I'm gonna bring my medium CA over and we are going to reattach this piece and continue turning. And I think what we'll do is, well, shoot. There we go, I found it. Once we get this seated in here, of course we're gonna use a little bit of uh, activator on it. I'm gonna hold that for just a second. Looks pretty good, I've got a crack there, but I think I can probably hide that with the clip. I'm not gonna get too upset about it. What I am gonna do, let that uh, activator dry a little bit. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna soak this blank with some thin CA and just let that thin CA uh, get into the grain and, and hopefully uh, hold those fibers together so that uh, we can get this fully turned. It really upsets me about that. I've had a lot of bad luck over the years with uh, ingrain turning. Uh, we're gonna see if we can't can't uh, beat that today. I've put a piece of cardboard under my turning because I have a funny feeling I'm gonna make a mess. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and really just sort of soak this blank down. I probably should have done that in the first place once I got it uh, round, but I didn't, so lesson learned. Okay, that looks pretty good. Whoa, that thin is tough to work with. You can see it's really just sucking it right in because uh, we're dealing with ingrain. There we go. Let me get uh, 
I'm going to loosen it up a little bit here. The uh, lathe. Ooh, I felt that start to stick. Shoot. Let me shoot this end. i got to be able to grab it. Darn it. I have uh, successfully glued it to my bushing. I'm going to go get uh, a... Um, punch and knock it out. Luckily that was very easy to do. I just dropped the punch in there and just, just slid it in and out a couple times hitting it hard against the bushing and it popped right off. Uh, the funny thing is I have misplaced the other bushing so let me find that and we'll come back and get turning on this uh, blank again. I found it. It was literally right in front of me. Isn't that uh, always the case? Go ahead and lock things back down. I gave the blank a little bit of time to dry. I just wanted that CA. I really didn't want to use the activator on it, uh, but I had to because of the bushing situation. Uh, so I just kind of let it sit for a little bit and soak in and dry. Uh, I'm going to get back to turning now, and hopefully we have a little better luck. We will periodically stop at least once more and soak this blank with CA. I've separated the bushings a little bit uh, in hopes that I can keep from uh, gluing them to the blank. Just going to saturate this with a little meat or thin CA. And uh, I'll give that a second to dry and then we'll do the other half. see it smoking there from the activator. It's good and dry. We'll get the majority or get the uh, larger area on the big one or the, the other side I mean and then we'll come back and get close to the bushings. Okay we didn't glue it to the bushings that's a plus. You see how the glue bubbles up when you uh, use the activator? It causes it to boil. Um, I really don't like to use that unless I have to, but uh, I want to get this blank finished. I've got uh, my tailstock tightened back down, and what I like to do is, look at that. I want to make sure that I am running true, and I am not at the moment well, I don't know. It looks like it might be something actually on the uh, bushing. It might be CA glue. But uh, I'll just lay my parting tool on there sometimes while it's spinning. See how that's nice and smooth? It's smooth out here, but it's not smooth here. But you can feel I've got CA all over it. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I think I've got it centered. Let me go ahead and uh, get back to turning. Well, it's happened again. <laughs> I was able to recover a piece of it. I think it's this piece right here. Uh, I am still looking for the rest of it. I don't think I'm going to find it, though. It it looked like it pretty well just blew out of there. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed. Like I said, I've always had trouble with ingrain. Um, I do have another one of these blanks. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to stop this video and um, I'll work on prepping the other blank and once it's prepped I'll turn it to the point of finishing and if, if, if I have to do any work on it I'll record that but I'll get it to the point of finishing and then we'll, um, we'll see what it looks like. It's going to be an incredible looking blank once it's done it's just really difficult you know you see I can come around right there on the other side of the resin is where I caught so you go from the resin which is probably hard and the wood which is uh, uh, softer than the resin and I caught and ripped it out and the tool jumped and I probably as I jumped the tool it probably caught right back here and pulled that part off so I'm sure that's what happened 
Boy, that stinks. That was looking so awesome. I just finished drilling the other half of this blank that drilled out quite nicely. And I've decided that I'm going to hedge my bets a little bit and drill some CA, some thin CA, right down inside of the blank. That will flood the inside of the blank and start soaking into, ooh, this is uh, messy. <laughs> That'll flood the inside of the blank and start soaking into the grain uh, from around the tube. And then what I'll do is when it dries, I'm just making sure I got all sides. I don't see any dry spots, oops, sorry, out of frame. I don't see any dry spots on the blank on the inside. What I'm gonna do is just let this set and dry naturally. And once it's dry, uh, I'm going to run the bit back down through it just to clean it up and hopefully that'll help hedge our bets. Once the tube is in there and dry, uh, I'll cut the corners off again to help me get uh, get going and I probably will also soak the outside of this blank even before I start turning and as a matter of fact, I think it's probably a good idea right now to go ahead and just give it a nice little nice little coat of CA because I, I, need, I need all the help I can get. Look at it soaking in. Look at that. It just drank that CA. So that'll be a good start. And then when it uh, when it's completely dry, I've got the tube dried in, I'll cut the corners off and then I'll soak it in CA again, uh, everywhere there's raw wood. And hopefully it's not even sticking to the cardboard it's soaked in so much. We're going to get this one turned. I'm bound and determined that I'm going to beat this uh, ingrain turning issue that I have. I, I've always had trouble with ingrain, but I am going to make this one work if it takes me an entire bottle of CA. <laughs> so we'll be back when it's ready. I've got the second half of the crushed blank chucked up. You can see that it's super shiny because it has been soaked in thin CA glue. I cut all of the corners off. That should help. Uh, I'm going to get this thing trued up, and as soon as it's trued, we're going to stop, and we're going to soak it in CA again, and we're going to keep doing that uh, until we get this thing turned. So hold your breath, and uh, let's see what we can do with this one. I stopped the lathe because you can see I'm getting down past where the CA had soaked in. So I want to give it a good soaking. It's almost perfectly trued. There are a couple of little tiny flat spots and will be there. So I've, I've gotten everything out of the way and I'm going to go ahead and I, I put a piece of cardboard to protect the lathe. I'm just going to go ahead and just drill some CA on here. You, just, you can just watch it just soak in. I'll come back and get the edges in a second. I just want to make sure I get the center section really well. And I got to be careful too because I do not want to glue my bushings on again. Okay, let me let me so let me separate the bushings from the blank. There we go. All right, we're gonna let this set and dry for just a second and I, because I really want that CA to soak in. Then we'll come back, we'll put everything back uh, on the lathe and start turning.
Guys, I am happy to say that the curse of the ingrain blank has been lifted. I am perfect on my bushings on both ends. I got a beautiful smooth surface. This is ready for sandpaper, and I'll be honest, I have never had a blank blow up while sanding, so keep your fingers crossed, but I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to get this one finished. <laughs> I've got my non-stick bushings on, and I'm just gonna wipe this blank down, take all the, any residue or dust off of it. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. A lot of people ask me, what speed do you turn at? And what speed do you finish at? I turn at about 3,000 RPMs. The lathe is wide open. I sand uh, at about 700 RPMs. And then I finish at about 500. I slow it down a little more for finishing. Boy, that blank is beautiful. I'm going to let this thing, uh, just uh, let the CA evaporate off of it. And uh, we'll uh, get some finish on here in just a few minutes. First coat of CA going on. This is gonna be a beautiful blank. I expect that to really soak in. You can see it's drying in a few areas. It's really gonna soak in and look dull. So I'm probably gonna to have to put a few extra coats of this thin. I'll keep applying it until it stops soaking in. Then I know that I've got the blank fully saturated and then I'll come back and apply my medium. I'll come show it to you when I get ready to uh, micro mesh. I applied five coats of Thin CA and it really soaked into the blank and I've put five coats of medium CA on top of it. And finally, you can see, if you take a look at the reflection, there are no dry spots. I've got the blank completely covered from end to end. It finally quit soaking up the CA glue. Uh, it is dry. I did not use accelerator until the very final coat, and I let it spin for probably somewhere between 10, 12 minutes. Uh, then I gave it just a quick spritz of the activator just to finalize uh, the curing process. I don't like to use the activator on the earlier coats because I've noticed uh, when you get out in sunlight, you can see that there will be hairline cracks in your blank where that uh, CA dries too quickly. I'm ready now. I'm gonna go ahead and micro mesh this and I'll come back and we'll buff it up. We're ready to assemble the pin. I'll be using a Sierra kit and just find a good spot for the clip. I'm thinking right about there, there's a little spot in the wood, a flaw in the wood, and I wasn't able to turn it away. I thought it might turn away as I got closer down toward the tube, but uh, it just was a little too deep. There we go. So we're gonna start this, make sure we start it straight. There we go. Tell you what, having a bit of a tr bit of a time starting that, I may have a little bit of glue in my tube. Let me take a another stab at it. Actually, let me realign. Yeah, my clip is perfectly aligned. Let me take another stab at this. There we go. I just had a little trouble getting it started, and I don't understand why. But now that it is started, there we go. I, I don't like to force these uh, nibs into the back of these pins when I'm starting them because you really, if you do, what's going to happen is you can actually split your blank. But take a look at that. I got a beautiful fit. That is just a gorgeous blank. That ingrain really, look at that. I believe that's called chatoyance. Next up, we're going to take the nib and I'm going to slide. I've already put the... Uh, spring on the ink refill. We're going to slide that into the nib. I'm going to thread on my transmission. Work it a couple times. There we go. You can hear the grease when I first started turning it. Uh, so I work it a couple times to loosen it up. This should slide right into here. And take a look at that. Is that not gorgeous? 
That just made an incredible pin. I really hope you enjoyed my video. I had an absolutely incredible time turning this blank. I mean, just look at that thing. It's gorgeous. The only regret I have with this is that I didn't attempt to turn this blank earlier. It's been in my shop for a number of months, and I, I'll be honest, I've been kind of setting on it because Ingrain has always, I've had a love-hate relationship with Ingrain for a long time. Uh, earlier on in my turning career, I blew up a number of just gorgeous Ingrain blanks, and since then, I've always kind of, I've just been nervous about doing Ingrain, and I haven't done any Ingrain blanks for it's been several years, so I, I, I kept, I'd pull this one out and I'd bring it to the top and I'd think, eh, I'm gonna, you know, maybe not, maybe not, but I'm glad I finally stepped up and turned it because it was absolutely worth it. And now I, I gave myself an education on this one. I now know what to do in the future to have successful diagonal cut or ingrain cut blanks uh, in my shop. Thanks for joining me today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening, everybody.